Hello there and welcome to an introduction to fashion jewellery. My name is Hayley Kruger. I am a jewellery maker. I'm a designer. I've been in the industry for many, many years. I've studied jewellery making. I've worked as a professional and now I teach jewellery making too. Um, so I'm able to share both my career and my passion with you. Um, today we're going to do a set uh, so it will be a pendant style necklace with beautiful embellished beads and some charms as well. Uh, we're going to incorporate um, a piece of chain link or in some cases it could be a board link and a lovely long bit of chain too so it's quite funky and fashionable. And then with that we're going to do some matching earrings uh, and a matching bracelet too. This is a, a gold and tealy green version. Uh, probably my favourite, but the one we're going to be working on today is a silver and luscious pink version, so there's something for everyone. Um, what we're going to work on next is the tools and the essential bits and pieces that we need. So what I have in front of me is an array of tools and a beading mat. Now the beading mat is a felt fabric um, which we use in order to lay out our designs. And the reason why we use that is so that our beads don't roll all over the table and onto the floor, which can be quite frustrating. Um, we use a textured fabric so that um, it holds the pieces where we need them in our design as well. Um, and in case we accidentally knock something out of the way, it doesn't knock too far, and then we can keep the design that we decided on in the first place. We're also going to use an array of uh, pliers. Um, Three of them are essentials, but I've got four because I like to use an extra one, so I'll tell you all about that in a moment. The first one I have to hand is called a round nose plier. Okay, That one has got two cone shapes on the top of the pliers. Um, they taper and they're used for making loops, so loops and wires. Um, and that's going to be used quite a lot today for attaching our beads to our rings. Um, as I mentioned, it is a tapered tool, so if you want really small loops, then you use the very tip of the plier, but if you want larger loops, then you work slightly higher up the plier. The next tool that we have to hand is our cutter. So a cutter has a blade, okay? It's not that sharp that it's going to be of much danger to you, but when I do um, use it, I do cut quite close to my fingers with with the, without trying to cut my fingers, so do take care when you do that. Um, the blade itself is divided into three sections. So there's the very tip, um, which you can use quite easily for getting into small grooves. There's the middle section, which is actually the most um, effective part to use. So when you are cutting, place your piece of wire in the middle section of the cutter. If you place it higher up towards the back of the cutter, it sometimes gets jammed within the mechanism of the plier and this can either cause the wire to bend out of shape or it doesn't cut at all. The other thing to note is that you'll notice that there's one flat side and one concave side. Now the flat side is the bit that we put up against the, pit, the piece that we're keeping. The concave side is the bit that projects the excess that's been cut away. So anything that's getting cut away is within the concave side of the cutter. As it does project, we need to be cautious that it doesn't go into somebody's eyes. So I hold the piece down towards the table, or once, I, once you become more practiced with that, you can cup it in your hand and catch the excess as well. So very useful cutter, and we're going to be using that quite a lot today as well. The other thing that we have to hand is a flat nose plier. So this comes in various shapes and forms. Sometimes it has a square nose, so it's called a square or a flat nose. But in this instance, we've got what's called a chain nose. There are a few other names too. So chain nose, snipe nose, or pointy flat nose is the, the easy term to use. That's got two flat surfaces on the inside, um, and it's useful for opening and closing loops, for flattening out wonky surfaces, and, and just as a general tool to help us pick up things because our fingers become quite clumsy. Sometimes this is used in conjunction, in conjunction with another flat plier, um, which is called the square top. But today I'm going to use two of the same shape, the pointy ones, because we're using lots of intricate loops and wire links and chain links. So that's the, wire, that's the reason I'm using the chain nose version. 
So the next thing we're going to discuss are beads, bead types, um, and then what we call findings. So to start off with, uh, we're going to use um, a statement bead as part of um, the feature of our fashion jewellery necklace. Uh, it's always good to work from something as a starter and that can inspire you to move on to other sections of the, of the design. So for example, in this case, I started off with these really luxurious glass beads and those were the inspiration for the tealy chips and green pearls. And then I discovered the little bumblebee charms and it all came together really well. So in this case, we've got some semi-precious beads, one large one that's got some faceting on the front. So a bead is essentially a rounded, oval or unusually shaped item that has got a hole drilled through the middle. Okay, so we're going to use a lot of beads today. So this is our feature bead for this particular project. Uh, you also get other shaped beads. So in this case, we've got an oval shaped bead. This is a glass bead and it's also faceted. Um, something else that we have here is what we call a rondal. And that there is a slightly squashed circle, also faceted, but this has got a beautiful coating on the outside. So it's got an iridescent petrol tone to it. Of course, many beads are round. And in this case, we're going to use some teeny tiny little round silver beads. And then we're going to have some sparklers as well, just to add a bit of pizzazz. So these are round beads that have got some stones set into them. Then in this instance, we've also got some Swarovski beads. These are cone shaped beads and they're used quite a lot um, in jewelry making because of the cone shape, they reflect a lot of light. So once again, they add a lot of texture and vibrance to a piece of jewelry. These have an uh, Aurora Borealis coating. So that's a, again, a petrol type finish. And again, it just lifts, lifts the color and pops it out um, and makes it a little bit more interesting too. And then the other thing that we have today is a selection of spiky charms because of course this is a fashion design and so we're going to add a little bit of edge to what we're going to do today as well. We're going to pile these up and make it both pretty and spiky. So those are our beads. As I mentioned in jewellery making you also have what we call findings. Now findings are the metal components in jewellery making. So they can be anything from a selection of chains, okay, they can be large and small. They can be what we call jump rings, or sometimes known as split rings. These are used for connecting items. Um, and in this case, because they're called split rings, they have a little opening on the top to open and close the items. We'll talk about that a bit later. We have head pins. Okay, a head pin is a little bit of wire with a little stopper on the end. Uh, and that aids us and threading a bead on and holding the bead in position. We then have a variation of clasps as well. We're going to use what we call a lobster clasp. Um, uh, when we get to putting the clasp into place, I will talk to you about a few more options that are possible. We have miniature jump rings. So sometimes in a design, you require a variation of sizes. Um, and these are useful if you want a bit more of a discreet look and you don't want your jump rings to be obvious. Sometimes, however, a jump ring is part of the feature of the design, so two options are quite useful. And then, of course, because we're going to be doing some earrings, we've got a, a selection of earring hooks um, and earring attachments. And in this case, we're going to be using what we call a fish hook. Lastly, what we're going to be using is some wire. This is 0.8 millimeter wire or 0.8 millimeter wire. Um, and it has a copper inside. So it's nice and easy to, to use and to bend. And it's plated in a silver plating. We have a combination of silver plated items. And in our other um, examples, we have some gold plated items as well. When we talk about plating, they are actually plated in a fine layer of silver and gold, but it's not enough to make it valuable. Um, however, it does affect the cost sometimes, but um, you're still dealing with the real deal, so it's still exciting. 
Um, and then the basis of our design is going to be incorporating some interesting chain links, which are also considered to be findings. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about chain when we start to actually do the necklace, um, but that's just to give you an idea of what we're going to use to start the, the structure of our necklace. Now, um, we are working on fashion pieces today, and so just a little tip on finding inspiration. Uh, keep your eyes uh, peeled in terms of what's out there, what's, what's the next movie that's coming out, that often inspires trends as well, um, what colours are going to be in fashion. You can often find this if you go and look on um, websites that talk about the major fashion weeks, um, fashion magazines, they're always talking about the next um, jewellery structure that's in fashion, it could be big bold pieces or maybe it's a season where it's small pieces. But often colour drives trends as well. So if you go into a bead shop or even into a clothing store, you're going to see a range of colours that are there for the season. So start to take inspiration from those colours and then you can build up a palette around that. Sometimes it's a good idea to actually start to create a mood board as well. So you can take samples of um, pictures from fashion magazines, put them on a mood board and then maybe start to collect your beads and put those on the mood board too and you'll start to see a theme developing. That's when you start to become a designer and it starts to become fun and exciting.